what is going on youtube so we're here working the chevelle we just finished it up got the ac running and i'm here with my boy don slick and we were just talking about some of the things this is gonna be the top five things that people screw up on their ls swaps now i'm not talking about like hey you you freaking blew your engine up because you did this incorrectly i'm talking about you went to youtube university you watched the videos you did everything yourself you got the wiring stuff you got it running the ls swap runs but this is the top five things that people do that causes them issues down the road. All right, guys. So we're going to start off the list with number five. Number five is... The brake switch. Yes, the brake switch. Now, what happens if you don't hook up your brake switch, and this is talking about if you have an automatic transmission and you're ones with a torque converter clutch. So if you run like a 4L80E, 4L60E, and you don't hook up your brake switch correctly, what happens is your torque converter clutch either doesn't engage, it doesn't disengage, and when you're driving, um, the car just starts running funny. It's just funny. And most of it's because your clutch, torque converter clutch is being engaged and it's not disengaging because it doesn't see this correct signal. Now, there is different ways to hook it up. So it depends if you have a Phytech system or an OEM or if you're running a Holly Terminator X. But either way, a lot of people, after they're done with a the swap, they want to drive in. The first thing they do is just jump on and take off and forget to do the little things like the brake switch. All right, the number four spot going to go to the fuel system people mess up quite a lot all right so you can actually get your vehicle running and um have some issues in your fuel system like for example you have the incorrect uh regulator like let's say you're using a corvette style fuel filter regulator you're wearing a huge fuel pump you should only use that with a fuel pump that flows less than 255 liters per hour but um other things too is if you're wearing an external fuel pump you want to run at least a 100 micron filter to protect that fuel pump so it'll go from your fuel tank to your filter to your fuel pump and then after that you have your regulator and then what kind of filter do you need to protect your injectors for the injectors is going to be a 40 micron hold up guys we got our numbers mixed up so if you're in a carburetor you want to hook up a filter that protects at least to 40 microns but for fuel injection you want one that protects to down to five to ten microns so that way it protects your fuel injectors anything bigger than 10 microns could clog up your injectors and cause damage to them so you guys want to make sure you run the correct filter. Like I said, if you guys don't do it now, yeah, your shit's going to fucking run. You're going to drive it like crazy. And then all of a sudden, like in a couple months, you have issues with your injectors sticking open. Um, they're getting clogged up. Uh, you have issues with your fuel pump getting clogged up. All because you didn't run the correct filters that you need to run to protect your fuel pump and your fuel injectors. All right, guys. So the number three thing that I see that people screw up with their LS swap and yeah you could like I said you could get your LS swap burning it'll be fine but these are little things that are going to cause your headaches down the road and especially if you're running an electronic transmission like a 4L ADE 4L60 anything that's electronically controlled is going to be your your inputs uh, such as gear ratio tire diameter things like that for the transmission exactly so it doesn't matter if you're running a Terminator X a Fitec or even if you're running the OEM computer, the computer, since it controls your transmission, it needs to know when to shift. Not just what RPM, but it needs to know what speed. So it bases the speed off the inputs it gets from whatever you tell it where end you're running and um, your tire diameter. Obviously, um, the transmission will spin a certain ratio, but if you have huge ass tires, you're going to go a lot further versus someone that has smaller tires. Also, if your rear end ratio is off, it's going to, or if your rear end ratio is different, your car is going to be traveling different speed versus someone that has a smaller gear ratio. So you got to make sure those inputs are correct. What are some other inputs that will mess up your tune? Uh, you got your injector size and your map sensor. There you go. So if you're um, running an engine and you put like you have smaller injectors or bigger injectors that you really have, your computer is going to have to add or subtract fuel. And it can only do a certain amount before it maxes out how much it can add or subtract. So if you're, let's say you run like 38 pound injectors and you put in that you have like 24 pound injectors, yeah, your computer's gonna do a lot of adjusting and over time it's not gonna be able to handle it. And also, if you have the correct map sensor reading, it probably won't even start or it's gonna run like shit. Um, especially if you're running like a Holly or something that's uh, map sensor based, like a Phytech system. So with that being said, now we're gonna go over to number two. So number two, I know I've covered it before, but that's definitely the cooling system. So some of the big things that I see, and like I said, guys, this is a list of stuff people screw up and then down the road, it bites you in the ass. So for example, the steam ports, the steam ports could cause uneven heating in your heads to where you start having air pockets 
and it causes probably misfires in the front wherever the air is at because it can't dissipate the heat uh, other things people screw up is the hoses themselves when um you have two different size hoses like this is uh one size and then the um cooling pump is a different size they run one size and then try to use a bigger size and then tighten it down which eventually down the road will cause a leak or they'll try to put like a little um spacer like a little rubber hose in between to clamp over it again guys that's going to cause a leak down the road and um you're, you're gonna have issues another thing that causes that that people mess up all the time is when they bleed the system they always run it and there's air still in the in the radio system i did a video on how to bleed the system the best way without having any fancy tools so make sure you guys check that out and what else what else about the cooling system would you think people screw up all the time oh for sure the fans don't forget your fans guys make sure you're running some high uh quality fans That's definitely save you. definitely if you guys run the cheap fans from amazon like that um it might seem cool like right now but once summertime comes around that shit is going to be overheating so you guys want to make sure you have quality um fans quality relays and quality wiring all right so with that being said we're going to go to number one on the list all right guys so the one thing that i see a lot of people screw up and that's with most swaps people it's the first time they get excited they get everything wired up the freaking car fires up they want to take it down the road so the number one thing that i always see people screw up is going to be the exhaust system exactly and by exhaust system we mean the lack of exhaust system put, <laughs> people put freaking headers on there and then they're like oh shit it runs let's throw it in gear and go down the road and do some donuts but don't forget guys your o2 sensor is right at the end of your headers or exhaust manifolds if you just have those and it's right next to atmospheric air so people will do that and they don't realize that the air on the outside your o2 sensor is reading that reading the oxygen on the outside too not just in the exhaust so they'll be driving around and all of a sudden they see air fuel ratios of like 20 to 1, 19 to 1, 17 to 1. And it's just going crazy. But people don't understand that. That also the computer sees that and it starts playing with your tune. It says, hey, we have a lot of oxygen. Let's keep adding fuel. And then all of a sudden you start running rich. So, yeah, you might have fired it up. You took it down the road and now you come back and the car is running like crap. And that's because your computer sees all the oxygen in the exhaust. And it just starts adjusting for that saying, hey, we need more fuel. Because it's, it's just, the computer is as good as the input to get. So again, guys, this is stuff people who screw up. If you guys, what I recommend, what I usually do, as soon as I wire everything up, I run it up. I'll let it idle. I'll adjust the idle. I'll let it idle for like, um, probably like 10 minutes just to get one heat cycle. Then I shut it off, take it to my exhaust shop, put the exhaust on, and make sure everything else is kosher before I call it a day. Because you want to make sure that all of your sensors are ring correctly. And if you don't do that, guys... It's definitely gonna throw you for a loop. So anything else you want to add to this while we're out here talking about people screwing up their swaps? <laughs> I think we have an honorable mention. <laughs> an honorable mention, what we got? Uh, yeah. uh, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Honorable mention, transmission connection. So uh, off your terminator or uh, the connector for your transmission, just make sure that it's plugged in the correct way. It has a little arrow on there, so that arrow goes on top. Just remember that. So I did cover that before, guys. Check out my videos before um, where I covered on the 60E, the arrow is going to be pointing a certain way. And then the 80E, the arrow points up. And people will notice that. So like I said, this is mostly on the 60E or 80E transmission as the Cox guy leaves the house. This is usually on the 60E and 80 transmissions. What happens is if you flip that connector upside down, like 180 off, right? The car will still run, it'll drive only in second gear because it'll be in limp mode and then it'll go into reverse. So people start driving it, all of a sudden they get on the freeway and they're going down the freeway about 50 miles per hour at 4,000 RPM and they're like, what the heck? So again, guys, this was a list of stuff that you could probably, there's my little daughter over there. This is a list of the things that you, you'll get your car running, it'll run for the top five things that people screw up and forget about when they do the LS swap guys if you have any uh suggestions or anything that you guys have screwed up or you see people screw up definitely post it down in the comments guys and i'll see you guys in the next video peace